गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अवर यूनिट नंबर 15 ऑफ क्रैश कोर्स वेव ऑप्टिक्स एंड इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स स्मॉल बट इंपॉर्टेंट यूनिट फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स एक्चुअली व्हेन मैक्सवेल वर्स स्टडिंग द चार्जिंग ऑफ कंडेंसर ही सॉ दैट when we are connecting a battery with a condenser to charge it when you press the key charging will start he saw that between the plates that magnetic field between the plates magnetic needle was deflecting and it is showing same amount and same direction which it was outside the plate but since between the plates no current was there so from where this magnetic field came and what about the continuity of current conduction current is from positive plate to this condenser plate it is charging due to battery so conduction current is going up to this point where is the continuity of this current up to that time idea was this ki only magnetic field can produced by electric current so he thought some current must be between the plates after experiment and theoretical works he got this he gave this current a name displacement current he gave this current a name displacement current and he gave mag about magnetic field ki total magnetic field is not due to conduction current only it is the result of both means he corrected the ampere's formula ampere circuit rule was this ki surface integral of b dl is equals to mu not i but he corrected it ki no it is due to conduction current plus he gave this current a separate name displacement current and math after mathematical calculation he got the formula for displacement current ki it should be equal to epsilon not d phi by dt electric flux rate of change of electric flux so after his experiment now continuity was complete and after this result he gave idea ki no in space how electromagnetic waves are traveling what happened here no medium was there but current was traveling so he got the idea ki electromagnetic waves need no medium for traveling so now we are going to after this electromagnetic waves this experiment was done by maxwell in electromagnetic waves two fields electric field and magnetic fields are vibrating in mutually perpendicular directions and wave is propagating in the perpendicular direction of both means all three are mutually perpendicular if electric vector is oscillating about x axis so i'm putting i cap the magnetic vector 
is oscillating about y axis putting j vector v will propagate in the direction of z axis that is why I am writing here z k is the wave constant or you can say propagation constant and it is given by 2 pi by lambda and omega you know that it is 2 pi by t, t is time period or 2 pi f, f is the frequency of oscillations and you can calculate speed of electromagnetic waves as ratio of E and B, E naught by B naught. Also you can calculate speed of electromagnetic waves in space by the formula 1 upon mu naught epsilon naught. What is mu naught? Mu naught is permeability of free space. What is epsilon naught? You know in electricity it is permittivity of free space, but if you want to calculate in any other medium, you can calculate velocity by formula by putting the permeability of that medium and permittivity of that medium or you can write it 1 upon root of if you know relative permeability and permittivity, you can write mu r mu naught and epsilon or epsilon naught. Two, three important results for your need purpose. I am giving only a revision of formulas, detailed study we have completed in theory classes. So, what we need a revision for crash course, what problems we are going to discuss after this or in this unit, for that I am revising you the formula list. So, only we need this in electromagnetic waves plus we need some properties. See you have to learn these properties okay. what is electromagnetic spectrum? All waves which need no medium to travel are known as electromagnetic waves. They are result of oscillation of electric vector and magnetic vector. So, there are so many waves, radio waves are there, micro waves are there, infrared rays are there, visible light which you can see approximately from 4000 to 8000 angstrom up to this wavelength you can see the waves. So, these are known as visible portion of electromagnetic waves. After that ultraviolet rays are there, x-rays are there, gamma rays are there. So, we have to learn all this. I told you ampere circuit law, after that Maxwell corrected that, modified that, he put the name ampere Maxwell circuit law. He gave the idea of displacement current, he got the idea that all electromagnetic waves are due to a result of oscillation of electric field and magnetic field or, or all optical effects are due to oscillation of electric field. Remember this? So, we have to remember these properties ki where we are using which wave plus what is the wavelength range, what is the range of their frequencies. If you know frequency, you can learn wavelength. If you know wavelength, you can learn wavelength because the relation you know that V is equals to N lambda in case of electromagnetic waves, C is equals to F lambda. So, this was all about which we need today for electromagnetic waves. Now, we are shifting towards three important concepts of wave optics. They are interference, diffraction and polarization. In this topic, we need to discuss these three things. Before these, who studied first the physical properties of 
waves or light it was huygen huygen gave it principle that light is traveling in the form of wave fronts wave front means a surface in which all particles are vibrating in same phase and this disturbance this vibrations are traveling in a medium or without medium they can travel in all possible directions if source of light is a point source you will get wave front spherical three types of wave fronts are there wave front means a surface or locus of particles which are vibrating in same phase if point source source is there wave front is spherical if linear source is there wave front will be cylindrical if source is at infinity wave front is plane and normal to the surface represents the direction of movement of these waves to which we are saying rays what are rays we will study it in ray, we will study in ray optics rays means a normal of wave front which is showing the direction of propagation of wave front so now after that three important phenomena are there interference diffraction and polarization what is basic difference between these interference means redistribution of energy if two or more than two waves are superimposed means simultaneously they are reaching at one point at that point what will be the value of intensity of light it is interference if they are reaching in same phase you will get high intensity light if they are reaching in opposite phase you will get low intensity light because we know that ki electrical effects produce optical effects electric vector produce optical effects and in that electric vector what he is doing there he is doing simple harmonic motion and we know the equation of simple harmonic motion y is equals to a sin omega t it is one disturbance if it reach a particle it will give energy to that particle and particle will displace from its mean position by distance y maximum displacement is a but if simultaneously two disturbance reach there what will happen if amplitude for one was a1 and another was a2 frequency was same both try to displace the particle in their own direction what will be the resultant displacement of particle we can get by adding these two displacements y1 plus y2 suppose second wave reached at an phase phi means we don't know they are supporting each other or they are opposing each other or they reach there at some another angle what case is there we don't know so we are taking phi phi is phase difference between the waves so what will happen now we know that intensity of light is directly proportional to amplitude square so first we try to displace particle by this amount a1 sin omega t and second we try to displace particle by amount a2 sin omega t plus phi we know the formula of sin a plus b
साइन ए कॉस बी प्लस कॉस ए साइन बी सो वॉट वी आर ऑब्जर्विंग विथ साइनोमेगा डी देर इज ए वन प्लस ए टू कॉस फाइव and with cos omega t there is a2 sin phi if i put in place of a1 plus a2 cos phi a cos theta i am putting in place of a1 plus A two cos phi. I am putting in place of this a cos theta, and in place of a two sin phi. Means I am introducing two new constants a and theta. If I am introducing two new constant, I should know the value of these two by squaring and adding. i can get a means i am putting a in place of this a1 a2 and 5 are known quantities a1 a2 cos phi square plus a2 square sin square phi and i am putting theta in place of divide second by 1 for this a2 sin phi by a1 plus a2 cos phi so what i am getting now a cos theta sin omega t plus a sin theta cos omega t taking a common what i am getting sin sin a cos b cos a sin b it means the resultant of superposition of two wave is again a wave means particle will do simple harmonic motion again but with different amplitude and what is the value of this amplitude we can see from here it is a1 square plus a2 square cos square phi plus 2a1 a2 cos phi plus a2 square sin square phi So result is very important. That's why I am doing in front of you, not giving only final result, so that you can attempt problem based on this. Nearly after in each one or two year, they are asking once based on this formula. So what we are getting? A one square. Take a two square common from these two, cos square theta plus sin square theta one, plus a two square. Plus two a one a two cos phi. It means the amplitude, resultant amplitude of the particle, will depend on this angle phi. At what angle? What was the phase difference between the two waves? If cos phi is plus one, which is the maximum value of cos theta. the resultant amplitude will become maximum and its maximum value will be a1 plus a2 whole square means a will be maximum and it will be sum of the two amplitudes and if cos phi is minus 1 which is the minimum value of cos phi a will become minimum and it will be a1 minus a2 whole square now means minimum value of amplitude 
if phase difference is 180 degree or odd multiple of pi then we will get minimum amplitude a1 minus a2 and we know that intensity is directly proportional to a square it means if waves are superimposing in the same phase same phase means pi is 0 2 pi 4 pi we will get the maximum value of amplitude means at that places where these waves are superimposing in same phase intensity of light will be maximum and if they are superimposing in opposite phase intensity of light will be minimum if a1 and a2 are equal you will get complete darkness there because a1 minus a2 in that case it will become zero so intensity will be zero at that place so remember always if what is i maximum now we got one more formula what is i maximum i maximum means remove the sign of proportionality k into a1 plus a2 whole square what is i minimum i minimum is k into a1 minus a2 whole square it means i maximum by i minimum is a1 plus a2 whole square by a1 minus a2 whole square with this so many result you can get and on any part they can ask one question from your side so learn this formula very important formula intensity of light is directly proportional to amplitude square so if two waves of same frequency and nearly same amplitude are superimposing in same phase you will get high intensity light at that places and if they are interfering in opposite phase you will get darkness at that places after that important result is this young did one experiment since it is impossible to get two different sources from which you can get a light of same frequency and same amplitude so what young did he take one source of light and in front of that source he put one cardboard with two very fine holes and he put one screen in front of that these two holes are now since illuminated by the same source so for this reason they are behaving like a source and they are giving you the light rays of same frequency and same amplitude when these rays superimpose at screen due to result of two types of these cases when they are superimposing in same phase this phenomena is known as constructive interference when they are superimposing in opposite phase this phenomena is known as destructive interference and superimposition of two waves moving in same direction when they are of same amplitude and nearly same amplitude and same frequency is known as interference when waves interfered interfered on this screen where they interfered in same phase their intensity of light was maximum and we got bright fringes and where they meet in opposite phase we got dark fringes so on screen we see light fringes dark fringes light fringes dark fringes in alternating waves and central fringe where the waves were reaching in same phase because their path difference was zero we know that relation between path difference and phase difference if path difference is lambda 
means equal to wavelength phase difference means 2 pi if path difference is 1 phase difference should be 2 pi by lambda if path difference is x phase difference or you can say delta x it should be 2 pi by lambda into delta x if delta x is 0 phase difference is 0 means they are meeting in same phase so you will get bright fringe here after that you will get one dark fringe it was bright fringe central fringe was bright fringe then again you got bright fringe then dark fringe we got on screen you know the experiment very well dark bright dark where you got bright fringes you can calculate the distance nth bright fringe you will get from central fringe at what distance and d lambda by d what was d d was the distance between source and screen what was small d distance between these two slits which are acting as two sources lambda is the wavelength of light which you are using here so if you know the distance of first bright fringe you know the distance of second bright fringe between that dark fringe is there so you can get width of the which we are denoting by w width of fringe you will get d lambda by d so width of dark fringe bright fringe all is same d lambda by d it is for bright fringes where you will got dark fringes that distance you can calculate by the formula 2n minus 1 for first fringe put n1 for second put n2 2n minus 1 d lambda by 2d So important derivation was there if you want angular width angular width means you know that if you know this width you want angular width what is angular width this is angular width means if this width is w and this distance is d angle is arc upon radius so dividing by d you will get angular width so angular width means lambda by d they can ask each, any question on any formula and see width of fringes depends upon wavelength because lambda is there and wavelength of light is different different in different different medium because you know that the formula for mu in optics we studied so many formulas for mu refractive index of any medium speed of light in air upon speed of light in medium since frequency never changes when light shift from one medium to another so frequency will cancel out and we can say lambda a by lambda m it means wavelength in any medium is equals to wavelength in air upon refractive index of medium since mu is always greater than 1 so you will get decreased wavelength if you are shifting to another medium if lambda will decrease fringe width will decrease so if you are shifting your experiment from air to water what will happen you will get fringes of less thickness width will decrease so it was interference interference means a redistribution of light next thing it was diffraction you can see the phenomena of interference in thin so film also because when light is reflecting 
from upper surface and surface behind it there is a path difference due to path difference we can observe interference there so that's why you are seeing uh, colorful colors when you are watching that soap bubble so many colors are there that color fringes are due to interference interference of thin layers one ray is coming from front part and one ray is coming from back part due to path difference we are observing that after that what is diffraction you observe that when we are putting suppose light is moving from this end to that end we put one obstacle in front of light and it is the screen we know that light is traveling into a straight line according to this now light will fall on this portion only this light is blocked it means according to our assumption that light is traveling in a straight line this portion should be dark but you will see some light in this portion even you will see patches dark bright dark bright how light is reaching there it means from this light is bending but you will observe only it when you put a fine obstacle means obstacle should be of order of wavelength of light this phenomena bending of light is known as diffraction what is happening there when we are doing this we are putting the slit in front of light we will observe diffraction on screen actually it is a kind of interference only but in interference we are using two sources but in this light are coming from two different wave fronts of same source due to their path difference we are getting bright fringes and dark fringes and if this slit single slit its width is a what you will get you will get it is known as secondary maxima secondary minima secondary maxima means where you are getting dark fringe uh, bright fringes maxima intensity of light is maximum by the formula a sin theta this is theta and its maxima you will get at the point 2n plus 1 2n you will get nth maxima a sin theta n is equals to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2 and secondary minima a sin theta n is equals to n lambda and central portion is always bright fringe and the thickness of bright fringe is that central minima thickness is 2 lambda by a central maxima thickness central maxima thickness you will find 2 lambda by a so only we have to learn these three formulas and there are two types of diffraction one is fresnel
Fresnel's diffraction and another one is Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer. What is Fresnel and Fraunhofer? Fresnel means source and screen. Both are at finite distance. And in Fraunhofer, both are at infinite distance. It was diffraction of light. Interference means redistribution of light energy. Diffraction means bending of light. What is polarization? Third one is polarization. If you know that optical effects of electromagnetic waves are due to oscillation of electric vector and in ordinary ray electric vector is oscillating in all possible directions in all possible directions if it is a point at this point electric vector is oscillating in all possible directions if we restrict this vibration only in one particular direction, so what will happen? Glaze of light will decrease. This phenomena is known as polarization. Since you cannot see the light, you can see only object where light will fall. So is it polarized or unpolarized? You cannot detect by your naked eyes. So, for this we are using one analyzer and one polarizer. What we are doing when light vectors means light is traveling, we are putting one polarizer. Generally, we are using tourmaline crystal which allows the only vibration which are along its axis to another it will block. So, what will happen when light will cross this it is polarizer. It will restrict the vibration only along its axis means after this now only one directional oscillation of electric vector are there. How we can observe this? We will put one more tourmaline crystal in front of this. It is analyzer to analyze the light is polarized or not. Now only one directional electric vibrations are moving towards this and they can cross this because these are along the axis. But now we start rotating this analyzer. What it will do? It will cut the amplitude of oscillation. In this way it will cut the intensity because intensity is directly proportional to amplitude square. So, if by rotating analyzer you are observing the change in intensity of light it means light coming towards analyzer were polarized. Otherwise, what will happen? Suppose it is tourmaline crystal and light is coming towards this analyzer was unpolarized. It means all direction vibrations were there. If I am putting this, this oscillation will cross. If I will put this, this direction oscillation will cross. If I am putting this, vibrations are in this direction. When electric vector will go in this direction, it will cross it. 
So, we cannot detect that light was polarized or unpolarized, but if light is polarized only this type of oscillations are moving forward. When I am rotating it, it will cut the amplitude. So, intensity will decrease. So, in this way we can detect. Malice studied about the intensity and he gave law. Okay, when light is crossing the analyzer due to rotation there is change in intensity and it is equal to unpolarized light intensity into cos square theta at theta angle if you are putting your analyzer at theta angle and light coming towards it was of intensity i naught you will get intensity i naught cos square theta and when light is crossing he proved that when light is crossing polarization if before crossing it intensity was i naught when it will cross polarizer intensity will become i naught by 2 means when unpolarized light will cross the polarizer its intensity will become 50 percent and when this light will cross the analyzer now change will be according to this rule. Only remember this malice formula we are getting numericals in different different time on based on this. And when light will cross polarizer intensity will become half. After malice one more important rule is there Brewster's law. When refraction takes place, suppose light is coming here due to change in medium light refracted. I told you previously in theory classes that light never 100 percent light will refract, some rays will reflect. These are reflected rays. and these are refracted rays. Brewster's observed that it is incident ray angle of incidence. He observed that in a reflected ray there is a some degree of polarization means light polarized reflected rays are polarized and when he changed the angle of I, he got one angle at which whole reflected ray was totally polarized. When reflected rays was totally polarized that angle is known as angle of polarization. What rule he gave? He gave that I if angle of polarization is I p refractive index is tangent of I p. From where he got this formula ki at the time of polarization reflected rays and refracted rays are mutually perpendicular. If this angle is r this is 90 and total 180 so it should be 90 minus r. it should be 90 minus r or you know that angle of incidence and angle of reflection are equal if this is i it should be i. So, now you can get result i plus r should be 90 i plus r should be 90 degree because total angle is 180 one portion is 90. So, sum of remaining 2 should be 90. So, what we are getting r is equals to 90 minus i, but according to Snell's law mu is equals to sin i by sin r, but r is 90 minus i.
and sin 90 minus theta is cos theta and sin upon cos and at this time we are saying angle of incidence polarized angle of polarization at this time it is angle of polarization. So, we got sin 90 minus theta cos theta. So, it become tan i p Brewster's law. So, it was the complete revision of your wave optics and electromagnetic waves. So, now we will discuss the our 45 problem assignment on electromagnetic waves and wave optics.